thyroid. What is it and what does it do for us? How is it tested? What is the research saying? What is your thyroid? I don't know. My name is Rusty Humphreys. I'm not the doctor. Nisha Jackson is. She is the doctor. This is the Dr. Nisha Jackson Show. And Nisha, thyroid. Um, I know, as I recall, and Nisha used to be it's still my doctor, but I don't see her all the time because I live in Arizona. She lives in Oregon. But I remember having low thyroid, and I'm supposed to be taking medicine for it, and I probably haven't for a while, and I don't know if that's good or bad. But what is important about the thyroid? Why is this, Why do we care? Right. Well, okay, first of all, you're, 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 you're making me nervous when you say that you're not taking your thyroid anymore because it's such an important hormone to take if you're low. Really? If your if your levels are low. So I really wanted to talk about what what is thyroid? Why is it important? What are the functions of thyroid? Because it has about 200 functions in the body and one of the main ones is running your metabolism. And I don't know anyone rusty, well, very few people on the face of the earth are are not concerned about their weight. Most people are concerned about their weight. They so don't is have- this one of the reasons why I'm fat? Yes. Okay, well, I'm, okay. I'm listening. So thyroid is intricately, intricately involved in your metabolism, in your body's ability to burn calories. So, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of thyroid experts and hormone balancing experts and hormone optimization experts that are out there really believe that it's not a matter of if you're going to get low thyroid with age, it's a matter of when. And uh, this is going to be a two-part podcast. The first, this one today, I want to talk about what does the thyroid do, and what are all the functions of the thyroid, and how how should the thyroid be tested? All right, let me because ask you a question: I, What does a thyroid do? I'm going to tell you what the thyroid does. <laughs> <laughs> You're always jumping the gun on me. <laughs> okay. So thyroid is really important because, um, like I said, it has 200 functions in the body and it's just this, um, wonderful little part of the endocrine system. And I, and I'm going to touch on what is the endocrine system today. Um, but it's a little tiny butterfly shaped gland that sits right here in your neck. And, um, it's just a tiny little gland and you can barely fill it. Now, if you have enlarged thyroid or you have a goiter or you have a nodule or you have an autoimmune disorder called Hashimoto's, you might actually feel, uh, your thyroid on both sides of your, almost almost just adjacent to the Adam's apple right here. So you might feel that gland. It really shouldn't be something that you feel that's enlarged or you shouldn't be having any trouble swallowing. Some people that have a large thyroid actually cannot swallow very well. And they huh. feel like there's something, something stuck in their throat. Okay. So that's, that's, what the, that's where the thyroid is located. And it makes very important hormones, particularly T3. Uh, your body actually makes one thyroid hormone called T4. And then the T4 is converted into T3, which is an active thyroid, which has the most to do with how you feel. So... Some of the functions of the thyroid that I thought would be important to talk about today are, uh, of course, metabolism. We've touched on that, and and that's really how fast you burn calories. The other thing that uh, thyroid's very important, uh, one of the functions that thyroid does is digestion. It actually helps you with your digestion. So when your thyroid is running low, you will have more problems with things like constipation or difficulty uh, eliminating. Okay. Um, another thing that's important for the thyroid is breathing. So some people, I know it sounds strange, like how could thyroid be related to breathing? But breathing is one of those things that when the thyroid is low, uh, people have a hard time sort of like catching their breath and it can happen when the thyroid is running high also. Um, heart rate has a lot to do with thyroid. So we find that people have racing heart with high thyroid and often a slow heart rate with low thyroid, although it can be the other way around too. Uh, temperature control, people uh, often experience excessive sweating um, when the thyroid is high or low. Um, w- we see women in the office all the time with sweating and they, they can't figure out what, what's the problem with the excessive sweating. And often it is that their thyroid is too low. The irony in that is that you also often have cold hands and cold feet with low thyroid. Wow. So uh, uh, many, many men and women notice that their, their hands and feet are cold. The, one of the symptoms that I've seen uh, often in the office when people come in that, that test out to have low thyroid is that they have um, 
achy muscles and joints. Um, it's almost like muscle arthritis, like almost like a fibromyalgia kind of uh, syndrome, huh. where even getting out of bed in the morning, Rusty, and they put their feet on the ground, the, their, the bottoms of their feet hurt. Uh, it's like their whole body is in pain. So we, we think that that's related to the fact that when thyroid is running low, which is the most common cause, I mean, the most common type of abnormal thyroid. So function, most people have low, low thyroid. thyroid. Low thyroid. Low thyroid. Okay. It's also, it's called hypo. Uh, I always try to remember it. I uh, have my patients remember it. Hypo has an O in it and, and so does low. So low is hypo. Okay. So when it's running low, which is the most common problem with low thyroid, I'm the most common problem with thyroid is running low or hypothyroidism, um, you have more body inflammation. And when you have more body inflammation, you have more body pain. So we see people today with, with more and more people today, Rusty, with body pain, and they're going in and they're getting medications, uh, anti-inflammatories, they're getting, um, they're getting uh, pain medication, uh, and, and they're not sleeping well at night because their body's in pain, but really their thyroid's just low and it hasn't been tested appropriately or tested at all. So growth and development, we're seeing more and more younger children with low thyroid or abnormal thyroid, and they're not growing normally. What, what would bring in low thyroid with children? Is, and is that a new thing with all of the yes. outside things going on? Yes. So there is so many things that can cause lo low thyroid. There's so many causes of low thyroid. But the most important ones are, um, are stress, which we're going to talk, talk about in part two. Like what's the connection between stress and low thyroid? Because there's a huge connection between the two. Because our stress glands are intricately um, tied into our thyroid. They're connected together via the endocrine system. So, um, so anyway, so those are some of the, sim some of the functions of thyroid. It's also very much correlated with the neural brain chemicals. So when our thyroid is not functioning optimally, it can affect our neural brain chemicals and cause depression, anxiety, feeling blue, not being able to function emotionally, overreacting, irritability. I don't know what so you're talking about, woman. No, uh, <laughs> so when you take the thyroid medicine, the stuff that you know I've been prescribed before and I've forgotten about, um, what is that supposed to do? And is it a big deal if I stop taking it? Yes. So the thyroid medication is really important because it will replace whatever your body is not producing, whatever your thyroid is not producing. So the thyroid medication, if you've been prescribed it, it's very important to take it because it gets you up to optimal levels. If you run on low levels with your thyroid, the problem is that you will have a higher risk for inflammatory disease. You'll have a higher risk for depression, a higher risk for weight gain, obesity, and all of the problems that go along with obesity. And you're also at risk for things like osteoporosis, you have issues with um, increased risk of dementia. There, it's really not something you want to mess around with. If you've been prescribed for um, a hypothyroidism or even hyperthyroidism, it's really important that you take your medication as it's directed and every single day. Okay. Um, and, and it's not one of those ones you said every single day. That's a big deal, too. Uh, I've heard that if you kind of miss a dose or two, it really kind of messes you up. Is that right? Well, you just won't feel as well. And the whole idea with your thyroid is to maintain optimal levels all the time, not up and down, up and down, up and down. You really want to maintain optimal levels. Thyroid medication can be affected by food. Um, this is something I tell my patients a lot is that it works better on an empty stomach, but, but, but if you took it with food accidentally, it's still going to work for you. It's just a little bit less absorbed on an empty um, uh, with food. And what does that mean when you say empty stomach? How long do I have to wait? Okay, I get up in the morning. I'm supposed to take my medicine. How long do I wait before I have the Eggo waffles with uh, peanut butter and extra um, syrup? What? No, we don't do Lego waffles. I mean, Eggo waffles I'm, or I'm, Legos. I'm, I'm don't kidding. Do don't Legos do Lego either. waffles either. <laughs> no, but so now how long do I wait before I eat? After I've woken up and taken my medicine, does that make, and does it make that much of a difference? Yes. You ask such good questions. Okay. First of all, an empty stomach is defined as 30 minutes before you eat or an hour and a half after you've eaten. Now the problem is rusty. I'm, I'm really careful about telling people about their thyroid. And I know pharmacists are also is that 
the the trouble that people get into is that if they've eaten, then they don't take their thyroid because they're like, oh, I can't take it if I've eaten food, and then they don't take their thyroid at all. Yes, so I'm to- I- I'm totally guilty of that, and I because yes. I worried about that all the time. Yes. So I would rather my patients, this may not be true for every physician or practitioner out there, but I would rather my patients just take their thyroid every day and try to take it on an empty stomach. But if they can't swing it, they still need to take it because so it still it, works. It okay, still so works. it doesn't, by not, ta- okay, by taking it with food, it doesn't just like completely wipe out the effects or no. make it dangerous no. or something, nothing. No, no, okay. it's definitely not dangerous. It is a little bit less absorbed, but that's not true for everybody either. So let's let's talk about what what thyroid does. I mean, we've talked about what the functions of thyroid in the body, but let's talk about what happens. I really want to focus on low thyroid because that is by far the most common problem with thyroid. And and this is getting worse, Rusty. Our 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 diet is worse, our sleep patterns are worse today. Um, it's happening in our children, it's happening, it's transcending every segment of the population. We're having issues with uh, high stress, which is directly related to low thyroid, and it can cause low thyroid. So I want to talk about hypothyroidism today okay? and what, what the symptoms are, because a lot of people don't realize because they just think about thyroid and they just think about metabolism or they think about weight. But there's so many other side effects um, of low thyroid that I think we should we should just kind of brush over. Okay. All right. Number Do one. It. Number one. Number one, fatigue. By far, the most common problem with <laughs> with low thyroid is fatigue or exhaustion. And okay, okay let me. I don't want to interrupt, but I have to ask you this, okay? And I okay. hate, I hate to admit this stuff on the air. And by the way, I want to thank everybody for listening or watching and subscribing to the Nisha Jackson show. Or if you're listening to us on the radio, go to nishajackson.com and tell your friends. And we have a lot of cool things, and we're gonna have transcripts of the show and all kinds of stuff. But Here's a problem I've been having lately. I've been having a heck of a time waking up. And I've been having a heck of a time in the middle of the day um, staying awake. And this is new. I don't know if it's because I'm getting old. I turned 54 on Thursday. Or, hey, by the way, yeah. I love the mustache. This the is, mustache is Thank you. Is this good. is if you're if you're watching, <laughs> this here is 54 years of growth right here. It's 54 years. <laughs> I'm hoping to be, I may use a razor this year. Um, I'm kidding. But um, good. thank Looking you. Good. And it is, I mean, I'm starting to get a little worried, to be honest. I, I'm having, it's, right. my sleep has just been messed up. Right. So I, this is a, this is a great topic and I'm glad you brought this up because this is such a huge problem today with people. They don't feel well. They're, they're, they, they have exactly what you said. They wake up in the morning, they've slept eight hours or however many hours enough, and they don't feel rested. They don't feel like they got enough sleep. And they're dragging, they're hitting the wall in the afternoon whenever somebody comes into my office and they say, I actually feel decent during the day, but by two o'clock I'm hitting the wall. Like I can't even function. Yeah. I've got to go, I got to go get something to drink to wake me up or something to eat to wake me up. That's a very telltale sign. That can be a very telltale sign of low thyroid. So because just remember, thyroid is kind of the, the hormone that keeps you awake and keeps you going. It's like a gas pedal. So we, we want it to be optimal. We don't want you to be scraping the bottom of the barrel. It's very likely, th- uh, Rusty, that your thyroid is low uh, because you're not taking your thyroid regularly and you cannot function at a high level with your thyroid being low. It's just not possible. Okay. Is there so, something that you can take other than the prescription medicine? Is there any natural thyroid kind of boosters or is that? Yes. Okay. I want to I go through some different thyroid options and treatment and testing, but I want to I first, I want to I hit some of the symptoms of low thyroid because most people don't know what the symptoms are. Just okay. ignore me. Keep going. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fatigue and exhaustion, hitting the wall in the afternoon, uh, weight gain, especially weight gain around the middle part of your body, water retention, like you can't get your rings on, um, splitting nails, like um, your nails are thinning out and they're splitting. That can also be a B deficiency. Constipation, dry skin, skin problems, cracking heels um, or elbows, uh, you know, like really dry, like your elbows are cracking. Um Cold intolerance, like you cannot tolerate cold, but you're still sweating. 
Um, weakness, brain fog, forget, forgetfulness, a lack of concentration, inability to focus, muscle cramps, um, uh, like I said, almost like muscle arthritis. Um, uh, with women, women often have heavy periods, irregular periods. Um, they can have uh, problems with missed periods, uh, frequent infections, lowered immune system, back pain, chronic back pain, uh, insomnia, uh, their body temperature is lower. If you took your body temperature every day for a week, you might find that it's lower than normal or optimal. Uh, pain and numbness. A lot of people have pain and numbness in their extremities. Uh, depression, irritability, feeling blue, more um, serious seasonal affective disorder in the winter if, if you're in an area where um, you have a winter. And then, uh, of course, decreased sex drive and decreased sexual functioning. So obviously, this is not a very pretty picture, right? These are a lot of symptoms that you can have. Not everybody has all of them, but but people who have uh, advanced low thyroid may have most of those symptoms. Yeah, I mean, but I don't have all those, but it sounds. I mean, it's pretty wide ranging. This low test, this low thyroid, yes, thing, right? Yes, and this is the thing. And I and I'm and I always kind of start sounding like a broken record at this point. But this is the thing. I really can't stand that people are not appropriately tested for low thyroid and they go in with these symptoms and they get a bunch of prescriptions to treat these problems, these symptoms, but they're not treating the underlying cause, which is low thyroid or something called uh, subclinical low thyroid. And that's like the beginning of low thyroid. And, and people can have real dramatic symptoms with the beginning of low thyroid. So I, I strongly believe that it should be treated. So here's the testing options for low thyroid, and then I'm, I'm going to get into the treatment um, before we end the show and then move on to the next show okay. um, to talk about um, next week to talk about the, the, the connection between stress and low thyroid. So in our office, I can only speak to what we do in our office. When you come in and we want to look at your whole profile, we're going to test the whole thyroid, the, the, all of the thyroid functions. We're going to look at the thyroid hormone that comes from the brain. It comes from the pituitary gland where all of the endocrine system hormones originate from is from the brain. And then they go down and they signal the thyroid in the neck. And then the thyroid sends out uh, uh, thyroid hormones then the feedback goes back to the brain. So it's like a continuous cycle. It's like, a, it's almost like a thermostat. Okay. So, so the thyroid, one of the thyroid hormones is called TSH. It stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. And that is just a signaling hormone. It's not your thyroid. It's not your actual thyroid hormone. It's just a signal. And that goes to your thyroid gland. And then the thyroid gland produces a thyroid hormone called T4. The four... I want to just stop for a second because this is kind of cool. The number, the number four actually stands for how many iodine atoms are on that particular molecule of thyroid. So iodine is really important in the diet. And most people don't, most people actually don't get enough iodine in their diet because nobody's ODing on sea kelp and sea vegetables, <laughs> right? No, 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 most, most people aren't. Um, and, and we took, we took the iodine out of the salt years ago because we had some bad batch of it. And now nobody's getting enough iodine in their, in their, um, in their diet. And it affects the functioning of the thyroid in a negative way. So, and you can't make enough thyroid hormone without enough iodine. So many times when we test thyroid rusty, we actually also test iodine levels to see, is this person deficient in iodine? Is in, and is that the reason why they're not making enough thyroid hormone? Huh. So sometimes just replacing the mineral iodine actually fix, fixes low thyroid. Well, I guess I missed that story. When did they take iodine out of salt? I remember salt with iodine. That was kind of the thing on in all the salt, wasn't it? It's been years. It's been years. And I, if I would have done my preparation appropriately for this show, I would have told you the exact time that that happened. Um, but, but they took it out and, you know, now it's back again, but, but it was out. And, the, and then there was this big scare, like no one should use ionized salt. And that's really, that's really actually bad advice because huh. you need, you need iodine in your diet. So that, that's actually one of the more common causes of low thyroid is not having enough iodine in the diet to actually make thyroid hormones. So, so anyway, so we do a test in the office. It's a blood test 
<clears throat> and it looks at the thyroid stimulating hormone that comes from the brain. And then we also order a test called T3, which is your active thyroid, and T4, which is your storage thyroid hormone. There are other tests that we can order. We can order another test called reverse T3, which is kind of like the nasty little villain to T3, which you want good T3 because it's active and it helps you feel good. But there's another thyroid hormone called reverse T3, and it reverses out the benefits of T3 in your body. It's just, it's it's a villain. So, huh. so, so these are some of the things, the investigative tools that we can use to really look at somebody's thyroid. We can also do an ultrasound of the thyroid gland if it's enlarged to see if there's nodules or if it's boggy or if it's enlarged. Um, and then, of course, we can run all of the autoimmune uh, profile panel on the thyroid. So sometimes people who have kind of a wonky looking thyroid profile and they have unusual symptoms and they're really, they're very symptomatic. They actually have something called Hashimoto's thyroid uh, syndrome, which is when your body is actually making, um, your body's actually attacking your thyroid. It's, it's an autoimmune syndrome and more and more people today, Rusty are getting this we think it's related to stress. We think it's related to our environment and our toxic environment that's not getting better. So, so stress can actually cause your body to attack itself? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah, that's that's really the that's really the crux of autoimmune disorders and there are getting to be more and more autoimmune disorders that we continue to discover which is terrible because it, it, it's when you get one autoimmune disorder and you do not arrest the problems in your lifestyle and the problems with your hormones, the imbalances, you are much more likely to get more autoimmune disorders. And it is a very disabling thing for people to have just one autoimmune disorder, let alone two or three. Uh, you know, so, I, I had one, Nisha, and... Uh, it was eating up my jugular vein and it, I had to have surgery. I couldn't talk for like three or four months. I mean, it, it wiped me out for almost a whole year. So I know right. exactly what you're talking about. It's scary. It is scary. And, and I'm, I, I take this very serious with my patients and our practitioners that work in our office, take it very serious when you're diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder um, or even a even 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 hypothyroidism or some of the other hormone imbalances, we take it very seriously. Like you got to get things in order. Your diet needs to change. Your sleep patterns need to change. You have to take this serious because if you start down the autoimmune path, it's going to get worse, and it could take your life. So it's really important that you get these get this under control. So those are the those are the tests that we run in the office, <clears throat> and then there's multiple different types of thyroid medication. And we can talk about that on another show, but um, there's medication that's been around for many, many years. There's um, uh, what, what we would call natural thyroid medication, but it's, it's, it's pig-derived thyroid. And then there's more synthetic thyroid, but it is the same as what your body produces, but it can be customized to exactly what your body needs. Was that levothyroxine <laughs> and levothyronin, something like that? Yeah, leothyronine and levothyroxine are the two most common um, commercial grade, uh, thyroid replacement, one's T3 and one's T4. And then armor thyroid, uh, NP thyroid, uh, are types of thyroid that are pig derived that have T3 and T4 in it, along with other thyroid hormones that, now, that are now the pig derived one. Could I just eat bacon? No. Okay. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to come up with alternatives. No. And you can't, you can't take the thyroid out of a pig and eat that either. Okay. That doesn't work. Oh man. So, no, this is, this is, this is not, there's no correlation there. Sorry, Rusty. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, so that's, that's kind of like a snapshot of the thyroid. I thought it was important that we talk about it because it has so many functions. I'm not even doing this subject. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm really, I, there's so much more I could say about thyroid, but, but I think this is good enough to at least show everybody and tell everybody what thyroid does. I have this graph here that I thought I'd, I'd just, I'd like just to put up here because this is a, a, a picture of the human body here and it shows all the different areas that the thyroid can affect. And it's pretty significant. You can see it really affects every area of the body for men and women. If this is not just women. 
So when your thyroid is low, it can affect every single area of your body. So take it seriously, demand the testing. It's really common for medical offices today to just order one test, which is the TSH that comes from the brain. It's not enough. You need the whole panel and you need to be in the mid to upper end of normal limits Uh, I don't like people sitting all the way down on the very low end of normal because that means that sometimes it's probably going below normal because a blood test is just one second of one day, right? So you don't want to be hanging out clear on the low end of normal. And if you're not getting your answers, go to somebody who will give you answers. So that, that's, that's really important. I think the testing and the interpretation of the test is very important. All right. I, speaking of important, this show is very important, and I think we're going to have to do an ebook on this show. We're going to do a transcript of that. That little uh, community, that little uh, thing you held up there, we'll put that in the ebook and give people opportunities. We'll tell you in the next couple shows how to get that. But this is the kind of information that you need to read and take to your doctor, right? And say, hey, th- you know, maybe you're not you know, doing it the right way because do all not do all doctors? They're not d- testing the same ways, are they? No. No. They're not. And, and, and it's okay to ask for what you want. I mean, it's okay to say, I would actually like to have more than just my TSH tested. I'd like to actually see what is my thyroid hormones that are circulating in my body? What, what are my levels? I want to see the test results. I think it's okay for patients to ask for what they want. And, and I'm a big proponent of people being autonomous about their own health care. People do the research. There's a lot of information out there. Um, you can get my book, Brilliant Burnout. I did a whole chapter on low thyroid. Okay. So, and it's a darn good one. It starts on page 109. Okay, 109, <laughs> Brilliant Burnout. Uh, where can we get that book? You can get it on any online bookstore. There, It is it is available in bookstores, but online is, is real easy. Amazon has it. It's a bestseller on Amazon, and I'd suggest that you just get get the book. All right, and it, it's a great book, and you really should get it. Also, I suggest you uh, do a couple of things. First of all, thanks for watching or listening. Uh, if you get a chance, would you subscribe to this on Apple Podcasts? Go to your iPhone and just click subscribe. Uh, look for the Nisha Jackson Show, and you'll be able to find it there or on any other apps, also on YouTube and nishajackson.com, www.nishajackson.com. The book is out there too, Brilliant Burnout, How Successful Driven Women Can Stay in the Game by Rewiring Their Bodies, Brains, and Hormones. Nisha, as always, it's a pleasure. We do these shows every Tuesday. We get them out there, and uh, I always appreciate you being here. Thank you. Anything else you want to say as we wrap her up? No, get your thyroid test. And if you have symptoms, think about what you can do that might that might improve it. Changing your lifestyle, looking at your iodine in your diet, maybe mix in some kelp every once in a while. That might help, actually. Yeah, I'm a big kelp guy. All right, <laughs> uh, we'll see, check you next time. I'm Rusty Henry. She's Dr. Nisha Jackson. And this is the Nisha Jackson Show.